This is the second part of my two-part interview with Sherry J. Wilson. Here we go. I do want to talk about Walker because I know people are going to be, you know, like I said, I, I've got fans out there. What what kind of guy, right, right off the top, what kind of guy was Chuck Norris like offset you know we know the tough guy and all that what what was he really like when the cameras weren't rolling chuck is <laughs> i used the line with patrick but i have to use it again with chuck i mean talk about lightning strikes twice for me the nicest most wonderful group of human beings on the planet um chuck norris He's exactly who you think he is. Well, no, he's not. Maybe maybe you don't know that he's just a devout Christian. He is a wonderful father, grandfather, um, husband. He is um, he's so committed to kicking drugs out of America and helping inner city kids. He started his kickstart program and um uh he he's just he's just a proud american and he walks the talk uh, the talk excuse me yeah wow yeah he's just you know he's not a prankster like patrick or larry he's you know he's more serious but you don't become the nine times world karate champion and fight at Madison Square Garden you know, nine years in a row and win if you yeah. don't have discipline and commitment and, you know, just that drive. Oh, yeah. And what? Hey, OK, so tell the story. I I uh, you have a, there's so many stories that I just literally <laughs> fall back and go wow did the did did the gods come down and and uh come to you what um yeah i mean literally what um can you tell the story about how you ended up getting walker what kind of previous to that what was happening it's just an there's just an incredible story there um so after my son hit two years old yeah, they call it the terrible twos because the kids are individuating from their parents and they become very, <laughs> where to go, where to go, where to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not that they're bad. It's just bad for the parents because you do a lot of chasing. Of course. Uh, but I decided it was time to go back to work. And um, so <laughs> when I just said go back to work, something happened in the Zoom. Oh, you're Did kidding. It... Did I go Did you... off? It clicked on my end. Maybe nothing happened, but you can check that. When... <laughs> I'll check it. I'll check it. Look fine. It just popped up. Going back. <laughs> so, oh wow! But it's okay now. Yes. Anyway, I decided <laughs> okay. to go back to work, and Vicky Light, my agent, started putting me out for auditions, and um, I was called in. Um, by Aaron Norris. He had a Chuck Norris film that was to be shot in Chicago. And um, it was two cops and they were chasing down this thing. And you know, I auditioned. It seemed like the audition went really well, but then I never heard from him. So I thought, well, well didn't get the job. So I went, you know, I was starting to make the rounds and this and that. It was several weeks later that I get a call saying, Aaron Norris just made an offer for you to shoot this movie in Israel. And I was like, I was so confused. <laughs> I said, what movie? And I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I've only met once for a Chicago film. They said, oh, they scrapped that script. Now they're shooting in um, Israel. And you're playing an archaeologist. You're, you know, excavating the oldest church in the history of life. And there's going to be the scepter and the prositorus. You know, they, they, I can't even say the word. Um, <laughs> it's like basically the devil's coming back. <laughs> yeah, and it's not even anything close to two cops in Chicago. That's what's amazing. Nothing. 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 So I said, okay, well, let me read the script. And they said, well, it's not quite ready yet. And I said, well, when do they want me to come? They said, in like three weeks. I said, they won't have the script ready before I go? 
<laughs> so I put in all the demands. I've said, okay, I have to bring my mother as my nanny again. <laughs> so, so chasing a two-year-old all through Tel Aviv and you know, all the up to, you know, almost the Lebanese border and all over. It was like, no, I need my mom. Oh, heck yeah. Wait tour guide for every day that I'm not working. I want to tour the Holy Lands with a secured guard for me, my mother and son. And, um, you know, those are pretty much, and oh, no nudity, no profanity. Um, I, if I play an archeologist, you know, let's have some intelligence. I think that they, know, <laughs> they said, done. So I was like, okay, then I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was well, that impressive that you did that, by the way. Well, you got to take chances in life. Otherwise, it's just, why not? <laughs> it just might wow. work out the best adventure of your life. But I love that you did the demands. And it was like, you know, you didn't just like, oh, can't wait to do a movie for three months. That great. No. And so then ironically, because uh, mid-season replacements, this was in the fall, they, they were starting to cast mid-season replacements for TV shows. And since I had done, um, you know, Dallas and CBS was my network, they said that there was going to be a Texas Ranger show where they needed an assistant district attorney. But the scripts hadn't been written. And before I left for three months and didn't come back till December, they brought me in. And Mary Jo Slater, um, the casting director at C with casting this, Famous. she brought me in and she had me read sides from law and order i believe it was mm -hmm. or la law la law or law and order one of the shows and she just had me read a lawyer's scenes and i did like three scenes they put me on tape and away i went the next week wow so it was about a month and a half into filming and things are going spectacular. And I met Chuck for the first time in Tel Aviv at the Dan Hotel. And I walked in, well, hi, Mr. Norris. <laughs> and uh, so we were having a great time filming. We had, it was also just a great, great life experience. I had a lot of time off and I got to tour the Holy Lands and it was just a, such a gift for me. A gift. And such a gift. And so Chuck comes in one day and he's like, I'm like, what? He's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I know something. I was like, what? You're like the cat that swallowed the canary. Just spit it out. What is it? He goes, well, it seems like they want this actress, Cherie J. Wilson, to play the district attorney in Walker, Texas Ranger, my new series that I'm going home to do. I was like, what? Your walker? <laughs> what? So the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing, basically. So he said, come on, after work, they sent me all the tapes and all the auditions. Let's go look at them all. So we <laughs> all piled in, Aaron and Eric and all of the stunt guys and everybody. We all piled into his, you know, his suite. And we're putting in all the tapes and you see my audition tape come off and this and that. He goes, not bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> he put in another girl and I said, oh, you don't want to work with her. She's very difficult, very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> but we, we were working right up until December 21st and Walker started January 8th in Dallas. So not only did we wrap before Christmas, we had to be packed up and ready to go for the other show. And he just, it, because we worked so well, it was like a seamless, you know, we already had three months of working together under our belts. Oh, and yeah. Luckily, Chuck said yes, because I was in first position with CBS. And he's, so he agreed. And the rest is history. Nine years later. Wow. You know, seriously, it's amazing on so many levels. One, people could, you know, watching or hearing that story would think, well, of course he was working with her. And so he was like, well, cast her. But right. the wonder of all this is that the network, which, by the way, I have an acting background, so I, I understand what you're talking about. The fact right. that the network 
came in and they, out of all the people probably out there have no sense of just how many people you went up against and who, and the talent for them to pick you and then right. send that to Chuck. And then he's like, yeah, I, I like her. That's just incredible. They had a list of one to seven that were their top choices, but they, you know, he was the executive producer and he owned 10, 15% of the show. And so he had a lot to say in who his co-stars were going to be. And, um, you know, it was so funny. I got to see Clarence Gilliard's audition tape and he looked like such a nerd. He had these big old glasses on. <laughs> he tough enough. I said, his acting is superb. And, you know, it was just, it's so funny when you get to be on the other side of it, looking at all the audition tapes and Clarence definitely stood out as being a profound and wonderful actor. And, um, you know, Noble Willingham was just wonderful and just so funny and fun. And so, yeah, and Noble really wasn't in the first one. He wasn't the first C.D. Parker. Somebody oh, else right. got cast. Oh, wow. When he, we had another actor do the pilot, and he just didn't work out. He didn't have the same whatever that is. With, yeah, that you chemistry you can't talk about. Oh, yeah. this and chemistry, and, you know, it's it's something you can't manufacture. It's either you have it or you don't. Yeah. And so, yeah. Pretty wild stories. I, oh, I mean, it's a total God thing. I mean, I just thank God every day for my, all I count my blessings and how charmed my career has been and how charmed my life is. And yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I also, um, I, I, mean, I want to stay on Walker. What was that? Go ahead. Beautiful husband, beautiful children, beautiful grandchildren. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, you know what? By the way, I won't totally segue off Walker, but I do want to, you know, one thing that I caught me in one of the, it was in one of your interviews or something that I read that I loved is that you said, I wake up in the morning and one of the first things I do is I go through my gratitude list. And I was like, wow, I like that. I'm taking that. I mean, that it's was cool. Every day just right. And, you know, if you're in gratitude, you can't be in self-pity. They don't coexist together. You can't be depressed if you're joyful. You, you know, they just don't, you know, coexist. You can't, you know, and so what is your way than to stretch, you know, at night you say your prayers, <laughs> prayers of gratitude, wake up and start your day that way. And I guarantee the day will go a lot smoother and a lot sweeter. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I mean, it totally applies there. Okay, another another one that I was curious about is obviously you're with, you know, uh, just top karate, top martial arts people, not only in Israel, but then, of course, with Chuck on the show. Did you yourself learn karate at any point? I worked out and trained with Benny the Jet Urquides, the world the kickboxing champion of the world, Carlos Machado, oh. Machado from the Machado brothers, who is not only whatever, triple black belt, he's a coral belt, the highest belt you can ha achieve. He he was teaching Chuck jujitsu oh. and, um, and Chuck himself. So we would go up and I'd say, I want to work out with you guys. Oh, geez. <laughs> I would, we would do an hour of these stretches and these this and the pulls. And I'd be, oh, oh my God, that was a great workout. They go, that was the warm up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I see. And then it was like, how many side kicks? Like a hundred. How many back kicks? A hundred. How many front kicks? So much training. I was in the best shape I've ever been when I started Walker, Texas Ranger from wow. just working out with these guys. I didn't go into full-blown karate blows and this and that, but just the absolute training and staying fit as they are such profound stuntmen and, and real karate experts and jujitsu experts and mastery. It there's, there's, so much technique that goes into jujitsu that Chuck was blown away. He found a whole nother world opened up to him besides karate with jujitsu. 
And now I have a black belt in jujitsu, my oldest son, and a purple belt in jujitsu, my youngest son so far. <laughs> okay, that's really cool. They were like, Mom, why didn't you make us work out with Chuck Norris and take jujitsu when we were little? I said, I introduced you to baseball, football, soccer, karate. I said, you choose. And you guys chose soccer, so it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> later <laughs> love it i love it did you and I, by the way are you and chuck still uh close to this day well yes if when if and when we see each other which you know our schedules and our lives are completely you know separate he's you know he moved back to the ranch with gina and they had two kids and they you know they've lived their life in Hawaii and, and in their, at their ranch mostly and raising, you know, a, a second fan, a round of kids, you know, that yeah. are just amazingly beautiful and talented and gifted. And, um, and I went back to Los Angeles after Walker. Oh, okay. They for two years. And then I went back to LA. So we would see each other at events or we would see each other, you know, we would overlap, but it was, you know, we just had different things going on. And Gina and I stay in touch more because Chuck doesn't do Facebook. And, you know, he'll do a, a video every once in a while. But Gina basically, I think, posted for him or Dakota, his son, will do it for him, <laughs> whoever. But, wow. you know, I talk to Gina more on Facebook Messenger than <laughs> we stay up. We stay up to date with each other that way. I think that's really cool. And and obviously, uh, Clarence, I mean, you're, you're, uh, you're, I, you know, just I, in researching, obviously, you guys are tight. <laughs> yeah, Clarence and I um, got together again, professionally, when he and I shared a manager publicist, and he and Roger Neal asked if they could take a meeting with me one day, and I didn't know what it was about. Um, sure, come on over to the house. <laughs> and Clarence was in town from Las Vegas, and he always did a theater. He was with a theater company, um, the Neil Simon Fest mm. in Cedar City, Utah. And every summer, he would direct a play, he'd be in a play. And, you know, they either did two or three plays and he would work in on all of the in all of the productions um, with Richard Bug and they had done Driving Miss Daisy and Driving Miss Daisy is one of those unique plays where you can take it out on the road because it's really only three characters. And yeah. so you can travel with three people you know, 10 suitcases of props and, and you have each theater set up for you. Well, they wanted to take it out on the road, but they needed another celebrity name. And mm -hmm. I had done theater since I was in my twenties, I think when I was wow. in New York. So I was like, okay, take up theater again in your fifties. Um, okay. Why not? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Wow. They played very well. I got, um, I had a month before we were opening in Albuquerque to a 3,000 seat theater. Oh my gosh. And so either I'm brave or I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I just go, okay, let's do it. Wow. Um, but I had so such an enriched career because of driving Miss Daisy and working with Clarence and Richard but Clarence and I were you know Daisy and Hoke and we had nine years of history working together on Walker so we I knew how what a serious actor he was and how much he you know how he respects the craft so much mm -hmm. and and Clarence is a very serious, serious actor. And, you know, and I knew when I stepped into that first rehearsal and he was so, he embodied this character and he was so funny. I was sitting there marveling at his performance and I was going, oh, 
oh, I would start laughing and I'm thinking, you're in this scene. You've got to snap out of it. Right. You got to get back. By his performance. And we did a national tour for almost seven years, I think. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. yeah. COVID hit. Oh, well. And everything. Yeah. And then we did when COVID was coming out of it, we got to go to New Jersey. We did the Smith Center to 3,500 seats sold out, brought the house down. And wow. unfortunately, we'd still be touring right now, but Clarence passed away a year ago, this last December. Yeah, and I know. Just, he fought such a magnificent fight. Nobody knew he was battling cancer. And um, he just... He was, talk about a blessing to everybody. So yes, we miss him like oxygen. He's missed for every reason. Best husband, father, yeah. you know, talent. Um, yeah, I mean, they were asking me at the Hollywood show, when are you going to do a Walker reunion? And I said, well, Chuck would have to agree because he's the major star. Of course. <laughs> Of and then I'm sure Nia Peoples and Judson Mills and Marco Sanchez and Jimmy Wilczek and everybody else would fall into, you know, into play. But we're missing Noble Willingham and Clarence Gilliard, which was, you know, we were the four yeah. primary amigos yeah. on the show. <laughs> How, um, uh, well, first of all, by the way, did you, was this a complete shock when Clarence passed or had he let you know that he had it? Oh, I knew. I knew. Okay. Sometimes he was doing chemotherapy two days before a show. And he would say, oh, my gosh, if I miss something, I kind of have chemo brain. And he goes, sister, just follow whatever I do. And I said, I got you. I can do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know this play backwards and forwards now. And I can, if you jump ahead, I'll say, okay, we're there now. You know, <laughs> if that yeah. happens. But um, no, he was, the stage in the theater he was so at home there more so even than in film and television that's where he his love of acting really shined and even though he was tremendous in all of the projects that he did in film and television as well sure, but sure. He, it's he, i realized what he was talking about because i hadn't done theater like he had and you do this dance with the audience it's like such an interaction with the audience and there's no take twos. There's no, I want to do it over again. That one wasn't my favorite. You know, right. you are out there and you're engaged and whatever happens, happens. If you stumble and fall, you pick yourself up, you brush yourself off right. and you going, but it's so much fun with a comedy because you, the audience would laugh and I had to get used to not rushing my lines. I right, had to get right. used to the dance that you would let them burst out laughing. And just as the laughter is subsiding, then you hit them again. <laughs> and yeah. so it's, it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful dance with the audience oh yeah there's that little pause that you have to give time for so that they don't miss the next joke yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. um well I, I i have to say that last tour knowing that i mean knowing that he was suffering he was getting through it i i know that movie i know that play and the two characters are so bonded that it's kind of surreal that you two were actually doing that in real life in essence and then going on stage and doing it because it is about supporting each other and loving each other and that's crazy it was pretty divine intervention and every time that last scene when i daisy goes crazy and she's like lost her mind and memory and this and that and all of a sudden he's like miss daisy <laughs> you're not in school anymore you're not a school teacher <laughs> and finally when i finally snap out of it and we're sitting on the couch and i you still driving that oldsmobile Every week, you know, 
<laughs> highway robbery, you know, our little lines, but I sit there and all of a sudden, just touching his hand every time I got overwhelmed with tears because I have to say, you're my best friend. Mm -hmm. Really, you are. And he was. Oh, he was. man. Oh, it was man. <laughs> yeah. It was no, I get it. Got to hold his hand. It was very special. Oh, yeah. No, I... I... No, I, I, I get it. I, I, when you said that, I was thinking, my gosh, to have been in that at that moment. Wow. Um, well, thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I was going to ask you, by the way, were there any, um, you know, I think of Walker and I always think of the action and I think of all that. Um, did you feel like, were there any emotional moments on that show that you, were kind of you know because there was a lot of joking and there was a lot of you know <laughs> you you were involved in like I swear you were like you know I, yeah, every episode they had you doing all these different things but were there any emotional um like moments going back that you think of that you were like wow I have to kind of go there for this one oh yeah there was a lot of emotional moments um there were there's spousal abuse there was me getting being kidnapped and taken up into the mountains and Randall Tex Cobb was the, you know, bad guy and this and that. And I mean, he beat me and he had a whip and he was cracking that whip a little bit too close for my comfort. And I was just tied to a tree and I'm just crying. And, you know, there are some really dramatic bad things that happen. Um, and there were, I mean, tender moments of great things. I mean, there was the episode that I wrote, um, co-wrote, and Till Death Do Us Part, and, you know, and just where CBS didn't want to shoot this episode I wrote, but I was so frustrated when I first started the show that, that the writers were all over the map. They just hadn't honed in on our characters yet. And I said, who, who are they writing for? They don't even know who we are. Wow. And so I, with, you know, um, Chandler, um, we we co-wrote um, an episode because I said, we need to tell the backstories of all of these characters so that everybody knows what we mean to each other and who we are. So we basically threw Chuck into a coma. He saved a child off of a dangling car and the falling car goes crashing down into the river and the, the bank below and he's in a coma. And so every single one of us goes to visit him in the hospital and we do all the flashbacks of how we met each other. And so it sets up the story for how, how we all met Walker what our relationship was, what the dynamics were, and how much he means, you know, to all of us. And so it was, you know, CD got his turn and Trevette and me and this and that. So there's just a lot of, there was a lot of tender hearted moments. There was a lot of tearful moments. There was tears of joy. There was tears of terror. <laughs> there was a lot of terror. <laughs> Chased by a bear one week, <laughs> landing at seven. 47 bomb bomber episode where you know they we blow, blew up an entire neighborhood they gave oh, a neighborhood that dfw was expanding the airport so yeah. they bought subdivision so they were blowing up every house and we decided to use it as an episode because how cool could you pass that up the great oh. bomber episode and wow. run as fast as you can and diving from blowing up houses and stuff. Wow. And so, I mean, as fun and funny as Dallas was, Walker was a thrill a minute. There was never, you were never bored. <laughs> it was yeah. just one big adventure. But yes, there was a lot of tender, tender, tender moments and um, heartfelt mm -hmm. moments. I mean, there was an episode with this little boy that was dying of AIDS and a child dying of AIDS. And it was mm. talk about tear jerker. <laughs> oh. 
bearing a bus full of children that was a a tearjerker and a scary one oh that's really scary (laughs) so there's a lot of things i mean clarence and i getting caught in this tank and then filling up the water and we're about to draw out and go it's like (laughs) <laughs> they they figured out a lot of ways. These writers had so much fun figuring out how to uh, put us in danger and well, uh, all the ways that Walker could save us. Were you ever at any point, did you find yourself in a, in kind of a, you know, right on that fine line of like maybe a little too dangerous? Yes. Um, we were doing a whitewater rafting episode in Colorado and there was tremendous runoff the snow was just melting like crazy and the locals are saying i'm not sure you should let your stars get in that boat you know and do this you know it could be the stunt guys because if it breaks loose those canyons down there are really treacherous wow. and the, the all the, the rapids oh mold. yeah yeah and so Oh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> we can get out there. To, sure enough, we're going. We're this, it's getting rougher and rougher. And you see her. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Ropes are broke. We're going down the rapids. And you see these stuntmen running as fast as they can on each shoreline. Oh, and, geez. And to grab the raft and saving our lives. We had the best guys. We had the best crew. We had the best stunt people. We had the best of everything. So yeah, that and I was like, no, I don't think I want to be chased by a bear today. Nah, I'll t- I'll take a pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> and even Randall Tex Cobb, he was. I said, is that whip far enough away? And he was just trying to be menacing because he was a total teddy bear. But he took two more steps towards me and cracked it again. And I screamed for the producers, actually. I said, you get this guy under control. They said, sure, we would never put you in danger. But it just, it felt too close for comfort, actually. And it really did scare me. So I didn't have to act that much. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) Wow, that is intense. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. Those are some intense moments. Um, the uh oh god, there's so much good good stuff. Oh, I want to go back. So you first of all, you didn't just co-write an episode, you wrote an episode that literally meshed the series. I mean, that's uh that's pretty huge. And guess what? Chuck went to bat for me to get this thing made. And he said, if it's a total flop, you know, I'll fly and take you all out to dinner. If it's a success, you all have to fly and take everybody out to dinner. And it hit the top 10. First time the show hit the top 10. Wow. I love it. I'm proud about that. Very proud. (laughs) You should be. That's huge. That's so great. Did you, um, by the way, did you ever direct any of the episodes or anything like that? No, I never did. I hadn't, I didn't have, you know, that... I had my second child on the set of Walker, Texas Ranger. That's right. Oh, that's right. So being a mom again and, um, you know, having <laughs> having a seven-year-old and a new baby, I was content just being a mom and working the way I was. I didn't want to take on that extra directorial hat because I really respect those that do it so well. And uh, I just didn't have the skills. I didn't have the training. I didn't have the, you know, I didn't have the time or the desire to really do that. And I mean, it's not that I couldn't put that on my resume in the future. I don't know. (laughs) But no, I, we had, you know, Michael Priest who directed every other episode of Dallas. I actually got him the job on Walker and he will, he always tells me, I said, Where's my where's my finder speed chat? Where's my uh oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah. he was such a good, you know, he was such a good director. He was the first, you know, we were doing 14, 16 hour days, killing the crew. And I said, just hire my Michael Priest. He's done Hunter, he's done Hawaii, he's done all the shows, and he's Streets of San Francisco. He's just wow. done it all. And he knows action. 
and he brought him in. They said, oh, all right, we'll listen to you. First 10 hour day, the crew was on the full ground going. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's a big difference. Chuck goes like, okay, he can direct every other episode. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's cool. Did, by the way, I don't want to forget Noble. What, 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 um, what was your relationship like offset? Noble and I did love letters. That's how our relationship was offset. He asked oh, wow. me to come up. Um, we took a train and we went up to the little town of Mineola to see that's where he was from, Mineola, Texas. Yep, I know it. Did love letters there because he was trying to save the Mineola theater from demolition and this and to bring activity back to the theater. And I mean, I loved working with Noble and because he was a really spontaneous actor and he did a lot of improvisation. Oh and God. I love improvisation. Like yeah. he'll say, want some goobers? And Chuck would be like, goobers? What are goobers? <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be offering peanuts or you know um, barbecue ribs or something and it would just sometimes it would throw chuck and he was just like can you just say the right lines <laughs> and i would just be like oh i'd love some you know <laughs> we just, he was he was a riot he was he was he's also just a fabulous actor mm -hmm. best of the best and uh wow. so uh, we played a lot at CD's Bar and Grill. We played a lot. We didn't say the lines the way they were written very often, but we had a good time. Oh God, I love I love hearing that. The other one that I do want to get to, I, I everyone I've had on the show, I've always asked them, are there charities or you know, as well as things that are coming up for you that you'd like to you know let people know about? And you did mention very early on your your charity, and and uh, I think it's important. So if you don't mind talking about that. The Yellow Rose Gala Foundation is one of the rare charities here in Dallas. It was started by Jimmy and Dee Wynn. Dee Wynn was diagnosed back in the 80s when Vicki Light, my agent, was diagnosed. She was diagnosed in what? Maybe the, yeah, mid late 80s. Um, at that time, Vicki Light was my one and only agent my entire career. And wow. she and Joni Burstein, they put me in even up until Walker, Texas Ranger. Um, so I had the privilege of having almost an agent manager my entire career who guided me through all of this and Vicki got MS. Oh. And at that time there were no therapeutics. There were no therapeutics for anybody. And what D. Wynn in Dallas found out is that as much as the MS society um, does so much for getting people from diagnosis to getting doctors to finding, you know, mm -hmm. putting their houses, whatever they have, you know, they need the MS society's genius at that, but it's a big organization. Right. And she, all the, or, you know, all the dollars that are raised only about 8% was going to research. Mm -hmm. So she started the yellow rose gala foundation and everybody is a volunteer to this day and there's no overhead except for paying the renaissance hotel or whatever hotel it's being hosted at and a very minimal payment to the band but everything else is donated from flowers usually entertainment to this and 100 percent of every dollar net dollar from the hotel yeah, sure research and this oh. last year million dollars how much half a million and this is just post COVID and they, she raised, I mean, she had the Eagles. She had, she had Fleetwood Mac. She, she, they, she got a lot of people back in the day what? and raised millions and millions of dollars for research. So what I've, I've been through this with Vicki for 40 years now, Vicki's 77 years old hmm. and she was diagnosed when she was 35. So she's lived more than half of her life with MS. Wow. And when she started, there was only steroids and now there's over 20 therapeutics. Hmm. And 
um, it is so encouraging that they're just cutting edge right now for finding a cure. And so we want to tip them over that edge. And uh, the Yellow Rose Gala is coming up on April 20th. For any of you that are in the Dallas areas or want to fly in for it, it's going to be great. We have the Supremes. We have the whole Motown theme this year. It's Fly Me to the Cure. And um, wow, it's just a really great time for raising a lot of important dollars. If someone can't be there, but they wanted to send in a contribution, is there a place to do that? You can do that. Um, shoot, I should have had my little thing. Um, there is, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to text you. The Yellow Rose Foundation is the yellowrose.org. And you can text Cure MS, just the way it sounds, C U R E M S, to the numbers 44321. And a shameless uh, <laughs> cure MS <laughs> four four three two one. I hand these out to, to different people when I'm going begging for donations. <laughs> so I think they it's wonderful. So they remember who uh, came knocking on their door and for what purpose. But yes, that's 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 the one I. I mean, I I do go to the Genesis Women's Shelter here. That is an amazing organization. Um, how much they help women, and it's really important. Um, the family place is also, you know, something near and dear to my heart. And um, and even Equest. Equest is equine therapy programs for kids with special needs and autism and this and that and that. I've done a lot of work in the past as well. So yeah, fantastic. But, yeah. yeah, no, I love it. And and believe it or not, I mean, people love to hear. They love to know. So that's cool. The very last question that I'm going to let you go is if anybody wants an autograph picture or they want anything on that level, can they, is there a place they can go to get that from you? They can. I have a website, cherijwilson.com, and I have a store. And if you want to look through the pictures and pick one, um, they they email me the request. It comes through PayPal. It's like you can buy a picture, you can buy five, you can do whatever, and then I'll ship them out to you. I'll personalize them if you tell me exactly what you want me to say. And I do also want to say that... Um, the Down Syndrome Foundation, it, that is also one of my charities, and they're out of Denver, Colorado, and oh, it just warms my heart. It's <laughs> mm -hmm. buddies there. I think it's fantastic. No, thank you for for sharing all of those and and just the the whole interview. I I've had a ball with you. Uh, you're just you Me know too. the second we we met, I just felt like you're just very real and very uh, open, and I think it's awesome. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all the fans that are out there listening. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Cherie. Bye. Appreciate you. Uh -huh. As always, thanks for listening. And please hit the subscription button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when I have a new episode. And also go check out uh, some of my other episodes like Jerry Mathers, Henry Winkler, Judy Norton, so many. Enjoy.